starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rosser, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Adrian Van Leiden has followed her orders. Orders from Martin Payton. Knowing that Stephen Cord was alone on the beach, she accidentally found him. And Stephen found her. Now, for the first time in his married life, he has experienced deep feelings for someone else. Feelings that he knows he must control. Stephen's moment with Adrian was observed by young Rita Harrington who, because she is happily married to Norman Harrington, is totally unable to comprehend what she has just seen. Deeply troubled, Rita leaves the beach early to get away from the tragedy of a marriage in jeopardy. I'm in need of an opinion. Great. Now, um, you're an attractive young person. The way my looks fool you, mister, I'm 18. Ooh, that old? What do you think? Would the young crowd around here go for a floating pleasure palace like this? Pleasure palace? Yeah. Look, there's plenty of room up top for the tables and chairs, the little bar, there's open space for dancing. You know, now the kids have really got to go for a thing like that, especially when we use a sort of a discotheque setup, won't they? I really wouldn't know. I'm not part of any crowd, young or otherwise. I'm a conservative, married old lady. Hey, then maybe you're just what I need, you know? A conservative, married old lady. Hmm? Maybe you're the one to tell me about people and places. Well, I'll try. Funny how things change, isn't it? When I lived here... Oh, when was that? Oh, a long time ago. When I lived here, this wharf used to be jammed every day during the summer. You know, and I mean really jammed. Yeah, I know. That's a tourist bit. One year they're here, the next year they're up the coast someplace, jumping up and down over an antique shop. Uh, who'd you want to know about? Oh, everybody. The old gang. No matter where you go, you never really get rid of the old haunts. Oh, do you travel a lot? Some. And you still live here? Well, oh, didn't you ever hear of anybody else who just took off and left? <laughs> Most of my friends just get married and settle right here in town. You don't look like you'd be satisfied with that. I am. I guess it's because I married somebody neat. Good for you. I suppose if I'd uh, married somebody neat, I I'd have been happy to settle down, too. But, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Aren't you married? Yeah, kind of. Well, doesn't your wife travel around with you? No, she doesn't like to travel. And she doesn't like me. Oh. My name is Eddie Jacks. Eddie Jacks, really. How did you know me? Well, you just had to be the prettiest kid in town. Rita, 
wait, don't run. Your mom told me about your heart. Get away from me. Give me a chance. You didn't give me a chance 18 years ago. You just left. There were reasons. Well, what do you want? What am I supposed to do with you now? Just let me hang around. I'm getting on. I need a family. I need you and... <laughs> You're too late. Where were you when Mom and I needed you? Well, we don't want you anymore. Why don't you just go back where you came from? <laughs> Is that any way to talk to your father? You're not my father. I don't have a father. I've never had a father, and I don't want one. Now, Rita, wait. Wait a minute. Rita, Rita. <laughs> Close for the afternoon? I guess so. You don't have to stay here on account of me. I know. Then how come you're staying? On account of you. God. You want me to call Dr. Rossi? No. How about Norm? Of course not. Then shut up and recuperate, will you? <laughs> I'm really much better now, honest. Oh, come on. You haven't said five words since I found you at my garage. And what if I'd run out the beach to pick you up like I was supposed to? That was the... Oh, Rita, you're all flushed. Well, it was uncomfortable down there. It was all hot and sandy. Flushed one minute, green the next. I don't want you to be alone, all right? No, it's not all right. It was just a climb back up to the road. You mind if I stay? Yeah, I do. Okay. Call Dr. Ralston. No, Rod, please. Hey, hey, hey. You okay? Down on the wharf today, I... I s what? Oh, I mean, down at the beach. I saw Stephen and, and some woman. She was riding a horse. Then she got off the horse and they, and they talked for a while. And then they kissed. Even? I don't know who the woman was. She was blonde. Blonde? That's Adrian. Adrian? Yeah, my grandfather's fiance. You're kidding. But she's really young. Yeah, she's really young. Your grandfather? Do you think Stephen... I don't know what I think. It's no, it's none of our business. Well, your family. Yeah, but they're past the age of consent. Think about Betty. Oh, I hope she doesn't get hurt. She's probably immune by now. She should be. Come on, Rita. Come on. I, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go in there and, and try and rest. Okay. okay. Please. Oh. Was that it? What? What's what's bothering you? Yeah. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Okay. Get in there. Thanks, Rand. Come in, 
got something I want to talk to you about. Look at you, you're looking more like a racetrack tout every day. Well, you told me to keep my eyes open. Well, what is it? Well, I just saw something I thought you'd be interested in, that's all. And you want me to coax it out of you, do you? No, sir. Well, what is it then? Well, when I led Mrs. Van Leiden off at the riding stables, I waited around to see where she was going. She headed for the beach. And so did you. Go on. I pulled over and I parked above the dunes and watched. And? Mrs. Van Leiden wasn't the only one on the beach. Well, it's public, isn't it? <laughs> they didn't act like it. Who? Mrs. Van Leiden and the man she met. Met, did you say? Mrs. Van Leiden met a man? Yeah. But I don't think it was by accident. What do you mean? I mean, I think she knew that he was going to be down on the beach. How did you reach that conclusion? They were acting so familiar. What exactly did you see? I saw your fiancé kissing Stephen Cord. I can't believe that. Well, it's true, Mr. Payman. Did they see you? No, no, because I hugged that hill like it was my own mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know how it, how it feels to have your chick out playing games, but... Well, I'm just sorry that I had to be the one to tell you about it. That's why you bounded up the stairs for you at a time? No, no, you did well, you did well. Come tell me, quite right, quite right. I wonder whether Mrs. Cord knows where he went this morning. Smart money says no. After you've seen her husband maneuver in a courtroom, you've got to think he's too sharp to give away any points in a game like this. Yes. See anyone else on the beach? No. You sure? Positive. And there's only one way that Mrs. Cord could find out about it. Oh, don't worry. She's not going to hear it from me. Not unless you want her to. I didn't suggest that. No, sir. Of course, if Mrs. Cord did happen to find out about it, I'd be interested in her reaction. Oh, as a matter of fact, you know, I've been known to shoot my mouth off a couple of times when I've had a few too many drinks. On my own time, of course. What you do in your own time, my dear Weber, is no concern of mine. You know that. Yes, sir. Are you going to need the car at all this afternoon? I don't think so. Then I guess I'm on my own time. Completely. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm.